Hi, I'm Megan Atkinson, University Archivist with Tennessee Tech. I'm here to share with you today how to search our website for digitized and paper materials. To start, navigate to the archives homepage. To start research immediately, navigate to the research and materials page shown on the sidebar. From here, you reach a page with four headings. Each of these is a little different in its use. These search features will tell you what archives holdings are, but they do not necessarily give you full access to an item. Many times this involves the insistence of the archives. The first listing is for finding aids and container lists. If you are unfamiliar with finding aids, in short, you can consider it a very large detailed catalog record for the collection we have in the archives. The records are in alphabetical order, and if we look at the topics, we will find a brief description of the materials, as in the case with the Alpha, Lambda, Delta records. Each dropdown will open to a PDF that generally has a history, a description of the contents, and in many instances, a detailed list of what is in that collection. This research method is good if you know what collection you are looking for and if you would like to view all of the contents of an individual collection in an easy to view PDF. The second listing is only titled Search the Archives. This is not very different from a keyword search of a standard library catalog record. The link brings the user to a search term box and allows for some narrowing of the search. As most know, I'm a fan of cats, so we will just sample that word and see what comes back. In the archive collections at Tennessee Tech, we have eight listings for the search term cat. As we scroll these terms, you can see where these listings fall. The first is in the Eads collection, which makes sense. They were big cat fans. This is listed as a collection, so in this case, the term cat is listed at the collection level. The rest of the listings show item level descriptions as you can see where my cursor is. These show box and folder numbers, which is to show exactly where in a collection the material you are looking for is located. When requesting material from an archives, these descriptions are useful. Let's select one of the items and look closer. I'm selecting the item titled Sid McGee, Miss McDaniel with Cat undated, listed as being located in box 20, folder 196. When I select this, I can get information regarding the contents. I can scroll other materials that are in the same collection in adjacent folders, and I can see the record group that it belongs to and read the description. This is a file in a larger collection of the records from Sidney McGee, former head of the Foreign Language Department at Tennessee Tech. His papers are located in record group 8, listed here. Some other features include the ability to search names as subjects and keywords. Note that this only searches words and terms that the archives provide. It is not a full text search of all the documents in a collection, and sometimes materials are not labeled the way an individual would expect them to be. Folder titles typically maintain the name given by the person who created them, and the subjects affiliated with the collection are given by the archives. This helps maintain the original intent of the creator. For instance, one congressman's papers listed some of the civil rights movements under crime. Maintaining this allows us to keep the creator's original intent, and when the archives provides the subject civil rights, it allows the users to find the materials even when the folder title does not indicate what they're searching for. The third heading is Digital Collections, which contain a selection of the archives holdings scanned by archives or materials that are born digital. Unlike our other choices, this does contain the item in a ready-to-access format. The digital collections are rarely comprehensive. They typically include curated materials from select collections. If you're looking for a picture or something from Tennessee Tech's major publications, this is a great place to start. If you are doing a research project, such as a major research paper, 
this will likely not be comprehensive enough. Typically, this type of work involves a visit to the archives and a talk with the archivist. These materials are also text searchable. Not every item is fully described in detail because of the level in, of human intervention required. For instance, search 1918 instead of World War I, which is a topic that would need to be added by an archives professional. Digital items are arranged by collections. Records can include video, sound, photographs, websites, and documents. If we briefly look at the records of Joanne Clark photograph albums, we can see the albums. There is a download button on the top in the shape of an arrow. Some assets do not have a download button on account of copyright. Please note copyright is important for all of our digitized materials and certain uses may be prohibited for many items without talking to archives. Some materials are large and may have a slight delay in display and download. If we look at the features on the main page of digital collections, we can see a search button on the top and a number of other features that will refine your search on the left side. We can use the search football to see what items come up in the search engine. Textual items are typically text searchable while photographs need to be described by archives. From here, there are a number of directions you can go. We can see on the left what collections the digital records are in, who created the records, the location, subjects, date, and contents. This will narrow your content when you are looking. If we return to the research page, the last entry, Locating Primary Sources for Research Papers, provides links to external sites with archive collections and contents. There are a few things on the site that are helpful to everyone, the casual research and a professional researcher. None of the listings include everything in the archives. Materials are processed, preserved, scanned, cataloged, and described, all to make them discoverable to the user. Due to the time and people constraints, materials are not all available, but more are being included every day. If you are looking for something you believe we may have and you do not see it, please do not hesitate to ask us for assistance. If you have questions regarding use of materials, feel free to contact us.